Hey everyone, Paul Bertarelli reporting for AvWeb. If you've flown on one of these airplanes, and basically all of us have, you know that when the crew throws out the landing gear and maybe the flaps and slats, the noise in the cabin rises noticeably. Intuitively, you also know that's because of disrupted airflow over the gear doors and the wheel wells. Well, if you could see this visually, this is what it would look like. This imagery was recently released by NASA as a result of applying supercomputing to what's called aeroacoustic simulation. With me today to explain all this is Mady Karami of NASA Langley and Patrick Moran of NASA Ames. Welcome, gentlemen. Let me start by asking what exactly we're seeing in this imagery. I guess you'll take that question, Mady. Thank you. Uh, yes, what you're seeing is that the airflow as it passes over the nose landing gear of a, a Boeing 777, uh, all the finest structures that are part of the gear system, uh, they do perturb the flow, and you have a very highly interactive on a steady flow field with a lot of fine structures. Uh, this turbulent flow that gets generated does leave its imprint on the solid surfaces, which is the surfaces of the landing gear, the, the fuselage, and the door. And these pressure fluctuations that are the footprint of these flow structures, they are the one that generate the noise, which gets propagated to the ground and affects communities near the airport when the aircraft is landing or taking off. And uh, that noise is obviously an adverse effect of uh, civil aviation that needs to be reduced. Now, how uh, exactly uh, did you input the, the data to produce this simulation? Is, it, is, it, is there some sensor that gives you a starting point, or is it entirely predictive? Uh, this is entirely predictive in the sense that uh, NASA has a collaborative effort with Boeing, and uh, the, through this joint effort, we are trying to see how far we can push our modeling and simulation to a large civil transport. Since the geometry we are talking about are extreme uh, complexity, that's a lot of challenge. Uh, the, the gear geometry that you see, this is the geometry that the Boeing has shared with us, and it is as flown on an actual aircraft. So what you do, you discretize the volume around the gear and you initiate your flow uh, with regard to a free stream as the flow is coming and then you let the simulation to predict uh, the, the, the type of a flow structure that gets generated as you see in that animation. Now we should uh, explain here that this was done by um, supercomputing so there's some uh, considerable computational horsepower involved in doing this. Uh, what was used, uh, I, I think the uh, release said that the uh, Pleiades supercomputer was used. What exactly is that and how long did it take to do this? Uh, the, the Pleiades supercomputer is the uh, premier supercomputing machine that is used at NASA and it has, if I'm not mistaken, over 220,000 cores or uh, uh, processing and uh, it's actually used for a variety of research at NASA, whether it's space-related or aeronautics. Uh, as you explained, the type of a simulation that you see is quite extensive and quite uh, resource-intensive. Uh, this one the particular uh, simulation took about two to three weeks on about five to 6,000 uh, cores of the Pleiades. Uh, this is, by the way, this is our medium resolution. We still would like to go to uh, somewhat finer resolution, meaning getting even some of the smaller flow structures that cause the higher frequency noise that is of interest uh, to, to engineers. So the next obvious question is, where does it go from here, and how do you apply what you learn in this kind of uh, simulation to, re to actually reducing noise? Two things, uh, the question that you raised has got two uh, sides to it. One is that where do we want to go? Uh, right now we are working on extending this computational simulation to the full aircraft, meaning having the nose gear, the main landing gear deployed, as well as the slat and the flaps uh, uh, extended. So that is a full landing aircraft, the airframe side of it. So that is our goal, and that's what we are right now trying to strive and, and, and achieve that goal. 
Uh, the other thing that you mentioned with regard, what do we want to do with the information that uh, we are gathering or the knowledge that we are uh, learning with regard to the nose gear or anything, uh, any other uh, flow field related to the aircraft or airframe. Uh, what we do is that we, we look at we, the, the solution, we find out where the region of high pressure fluctuations uh, are located, what subcomponents are generating the most turbulent flow, how does that turbulent flow impact some of the other subcomponents, and by that, that interaction you have an elevated uh, sources of noise. And so once you learn all of that uh, information, then the next step would be what kind of alteration or type of a addition of a new hardware to that landing gear would uh, allow us to reduce, substantially reduce the, the surface pressure fluctuation and therefore the byproduct of, the, of it, which is the noise that gets generated and propagated to the ground. Patrick, what is uh, AIM's involvement in this? Um, well, I, I'm part of the visualization group at NASA AIM's. Um, our charter is to work with the researchers who run on Pleiades and help them with their visualizations, analyzing their results, essentially. And in many cases, they can get what they need with off-the-shelf tools, visualization tools. But in some cases, the researchers are looking for something a little bit more unusual or, or their data doesn't work really well in the standard tools. There's a variety of reasons. Their data data are too large to fit in the tools. And so we have more specialized help them do visualizations. And so in Medi's case, we've, we've been working together for several years uh, earlier with uh, business jet size aircraft and now with the, the large civilian transport size. I'm using a combination of kind of software that we've developed internally and some open source software to produce the animations that you saw um, as part of supercomputing this year. Quality. I see. Well, gentlemen, thank you very much. Uh, this is an interesting technology. I, I look forward to seeing the, uh, the high-resolution version of this, and I'm sure you've got some uh, interesting uh, uh, simulations coming up in the future. I appreciate your taking the time to explain it. This is Paul Bertarelli reporting for AvWeb. You've been listening to Mady Kurarami of NASA and Patrick Moran of NASA Ames. Thanks for listening.